Welcome to this episode of Hear It From a Husky. I'm Dr. Lori Fiorenza, and today I'm joined by Cindy Wong, our Executive Functioning Study Skills Instructor. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you for having me, Dr. Fiorenza. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about what executive functioning is. Sure. So executive functioning is a set of skills that we all inherently have to some degree. So if you think of your brain as an airport and executive functions as kind of the air traffic control, um, okay. we are absorbing information from our environment every single day and kind of trying to put it in the right place and in the right mm-hmm. sequence mm-hmm. in order to get things done. So okay. all through our lives, we are trying to pick up these skills as babies, as toddlers, as adolescents, okay. and into adulthood. So you know, if we were to make an analogy of picking up, say, as a baby, please give me a ball to toddlers, to adolescents, try now to juggle these balls. Okay. And even maybe for you today, you know, I I see you around the building. Please now juggle these five balls and spin a plate on your head. (laughs) Executive functions are are helping you do that. And how do you help our students in the course? So in EFSS, um, our course is basically centered around improving those skills. So in school, you know, the metric basically is grades, but we do try to build on the skills that help you achieve those grades. Okay. So whether it's being able to plan ahead to meet goals, have some self-control over your actions, Mm -hmm. and staying focused despite distractions day to day, this course will help you improve those skills and hopefully it'll manifest in grades and things of that nature. Wonderful. Can you just give a little overview or insight as to what are you noticing with students who are taking your course? Oh, that's, that's a wonderful question. So I just had a student, senior um, student, who came to me and said, you know, um, coming in, I have these classes, which I love, mm-hmm. but I can't seem to get good grades in them, even though I'm interested and I do the work. Okay. So I basically am trying to help her identify what sort of things are lacking And a big part of it, it turns out, is self-advocacy. And so that is one of many skills that are taught in EFSS. And so one specific incident was she had a grade where she was like, I did well in this. I know I did well, but it did not reflect. It did not reflect. Okay. And so I coached her in how to basically, you know, advocate and have a conversation with a teacher. Whereas before, okay. as children, it's easy for parents to maybe say, I will advocate on my child's behalf. Mm-hmm. But this is the perfect age to teach that skill that, okay. you know, I will help you find the words in order to calmly, assertively, and positively make your case. And so that you will have a positive outcome. And I'm glad to say, after she had a conversation with the teacher, she did have a positive outcome. That's wonderful. So you mentioned um, parents and home. So can you talk a little bit about what can a parent do at home to support their students' executive functioning skills? Yeah, wonderful. Um, I do get a lot of questions from parents, and my answers typically fall into kind of three buckets here. They usually fall into organization, time management, Mm -hmm. and again, that self-advocacy portion. Okay. So in terms of how parents can support each of those things, um, let's talk about each of them more specifically. So for organization, it's planner use, Mm -hmm. right? So whether it's the planner that the school gives the students Mm -hmm. or any type of digital planner. Um, So Google Classroom has powerful components where it helps you plan, you know, your your day after after school to get stuff done. The to-do, the missing assignments, Mm -hmm. the Google Calendar, Mm -hmm. those are all great things when used in conjunction with Skyward, gives you a great snapshot of what you need to do, what's missing, and what's on the horizon. Okay. So um, for parents, I would encourage you to maybe review with your student periodically. Are they aware that these tools exist and are they using them? Right, okay. And then as for time management portion, Mm -hmm. you know, we honor that these students that walk in, they're just not students. They are part of families, they're part of organizations, they're part of sports, and they have Mm -hmm. lives. Right. And the time spent um, after school, it's it's limited. Mm -hmm. So if you have three hour football practice, you have, you know, hang out time with friends, you have meals with your family, is there time for schoolwork? Okay. And so for parents, um, help your student develop those healthy habits of maybe, you know, the three hours of football practice. Is there maybe an hour blocked aside for schoolwork? Work through that mm-hmm. family schedule with your student and um, mm-hmm. help develop those habits. And if your student tells you, no homework, I have nothing to do, still build in that time, I say, because you could help organize for either the coming week mm. or even the coming month, you yeah, know, that's for a the good goals. Idea. And then the last part, obviously, mm-hmm. the self-advocacy. I touched on that before, but it's really so important. Even after you graduate from high school, those skills 
that you can speak up calmly, assertively, and positively, uh, that will, mm-hmm. they will help you throughout your lives. So parents, I'm not saying, Jesus, take the wheel. I am saying, though, now is the time for you to help kind of scaffold that process. Maybe help your student, okay. help your student find the words to write those emails. Mm-hmm or the words to speak to the teacher, but try not to do it on your student's behalf so much. That's a really good idea. Thank you so much for this information. If there is a student that's listening or a family that's listening and they're interested in determining whether or not their student would benefit from this course, what process should they use? Great question. I believe the process is initiated by a counselor. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is um, reach out to your student's counselor. And from that discussion, there is a team called the PSS team, Mm -hmm. which will kind of review, review everything with you and with your student. And a referral will be made. And the session is about roughly eight weeks in length. And um, there have been very positive outcomes from the students have gone through. That's so good. I encourage you to yeah have that discussion with your counselors. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me, Cindy. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hear It From a Husky. Stay tuned for more from our Husky faculty making an impact. Oh, 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 oh,